What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released macOS 13 Ventura Beta 1. And while it's not as flashy as the new iOS 16 update, there are quite a few changes in the software that I think you guys will really like. Now, before we jump into the features, here are the supported Macs for this new update. iMac and iMac Pro 2017 and newer, MacBook and MacBook Pro 2017 and newer, MacBook Air and Mac Mini 2018 and newer, and the Mac Pro 2019 and newer along with of course the new mac studio all right so now let's jump into those new features so first off if we go up to the status bar into our apple logo and tap on about this mac you can see this is our first change so we have a new look to the about this mac menu so it doesn't show quite as much as it did previously but it does have a new clean look and I actually like it. So you can also tap on more info to see more information about that. And it will show you right here. You got your details, your warranty, all of that right here in this section. Now, this also takes us to the next big feature, which is the new system settings. Yes, system settings now, not system preferences. So it has been renamed and you can see the overall look is a lot more reminiscent of iOS and iPad OS, which I love. I find this to be a lot less clunky and just overwhelming and everything doesn't seem to be conjoined and just all cluttered together so I really like it you can see we have quite a few changes here in the interface of these different sub menus you can see that focus modes and notifications are now separated they used to be conjoined on previous versions the desktop and dock section right here has a nice UI change as well we have our clock options down here so a little sub menu for that everything is just separated and looks so much better and also if we go down to wallpaper right here you can see first off this is the new wallpaper for this new mac os version you can see here in the background it's kind of like a just a big yellow flower so that's what it looks like you can see it's right here in the light and dark desktop section now if you go down to the bottom of this wallpaper section you will see we have colors right here and this allows you to basically set up a gradient so you can kind of create your own background here with this new mac os version so obviously these don't look very good but you can do auto rotate and you can create your own and i like how it shows the little mock-up at the top right here and if you tap on this eye you can change this to show light or dark or you could just have it set to go automatically so if you change it to dark you can see it changes it or you could just have it set to automatic and then of course we have our lock screen we have our keyboard our trackpad we have all those settings down here and everything is just much better laid out spotlight search also gets some enhancements here with this new version so if we go ahead and activate spotlight search you could already see a little different in the UI so you can see we have this little bar below where it shows spotlight search now and we actually have quick actions that we can run straight from the spotlight search now so things like setting an alarm starting a focus mode finding the name of a song with Shazam running a shortcut you can do a lot of different actions from the spotlight search now so if I put in recording a video that is the name of one of my focus modes you can see right there I could press this and it will turn on my focus mode for recording a video and you'll see right here we also have some photos from our finder now if you search for something like kitten for example you can see it also does pull in web images and it will also show images if you have them on your camera roll or in finder or anything like that that matches the kitten description so that's pretty neat you can even use live text straight from the spotlight search now so if you found an image and you wanted to copy some text from that image you could do that without leaving spotlight and the headlining feature from macOS Ventura is definitely the stage manager so if you go up to your control center up here in the top right you will see that we have a new toggle here for stage manager so let me go ahead and set the stage for you guys real quick no pun intended so if I pull up a bunch of windows we'll just do Chrome Safari calendar we'll just pull up multiple windows here just to give you guys the concept of what this does so as you can see I have a bunch of windows pulled up and maybe I'm trying to make room on my desktop because I want to be able to see multiple windows at the same time but I'm running out of space that is where stage manager comes in handy so if I press on that you could see that now all of a sudden it's a lot cleaner and all of those windows are now to the left of my screen and I only have one main window here in the forefront and if I wanted to switch out those windows I could just simply tap on it just like so you could also do this when you have multiple you know iterations of the same application open so if I, for example if I wanted to open up another Safari window right here you could see there we go if I go into YouTube let me open up another window where I go into something else so there we go and you can see when you go over here on the left you can highlight the different web page you can see it highlights when you hover over it and you can select to go back to that specific 
window. You can also slide over and you can see it kind of bumps those windows out of the way. So if you needed something to be full screen or just take over this side of the screen, you can do that and they will oblige, they will move out of your way. And if you go back into the control center and press on stage manager, once you're already in it, you can see you have the option to also hide recent apps. So if you wanted to hide them, you can see right there, it will hide them. And if you put your cursor over there on the left-hand side of the screen, it will make them pop out and you'll be able to access them just like that. I personally like it better when they're hidden. I think it's pretty cool to be able to do that. It works pretty well for beta one. So that is a new feature that I think a lot of people will find pretty good use out of. It's not perfect, but I think it's a pretty good start. Now, perhaps my favorite feature in the software is continuity camera. So this allows you to use your iPhone as a webcam. So because the iPhone, you know, has such a great camera, this will enable center stage on any Mac. So if you have an older Mac that did not support center stage, now, if you have a newer iPhone, you will have center stage because of your iPhone's camera. And it also adds studio light and portrait mode as well. Again, thanks to that iPhone camera. There's also a cool new feature called desk view that mimics an overhead camera setup, showing your desk and your face at the same time. So this is not available in beta one, but this is a very awesome feature that I will definitely be showing once we get our hands on that. We also now get the option to hand off FaceTime calls. So if you were taking a FaceTime call on your computer, but you needed to leave, you can now hand off that call to your iPhone. That way you don't need to hang up and start a new FaceTime call. The weather application has finally made its way to Mac OS. You can see here the layout is very cool. It's of course very similar to iOS and iPad OS, nothing too crazy and out of the box, but we do have our precipitation maps here as well. We have all the functionality that we have on iOS and iPad OS here on Mac OS now. And of course we can search for a location up here. So if we want to search for New York, we could add that in right there and see the weather. We have the plus icon right here as well to add it. And once you click on that plus icon right there and you tap on the little sidebar right here, you could see those locations now show up over here in that sidebar since you added them to your locations. And like I showed you earlier, we do also have the clock application on Mac OS now. So nothing too crazy, but we can set alarms. We can set timers now without needing to do it on the web. We can set our stopwatch. We could do all of that now with a actual clock application. And if you start a timer here, you can see up in the status bar we have a little countdown with the timer icon right next to it and if you click on that it will take you back into the clock application where you can pause or end that timer we also have live captions so if you go into your accessibility settings you can see we now have live captions just like we do on iOS and iPad OS and you can see here it says your Mac will automatically caption audio using on-device intelligence so it's not perfect it's still early on but that's why it says it's in beta it will get better over time and of course just like like on iOS and iPad OS, you can also use this in FaceTime. Also, the dictation feature now allows you to enter emojis by saying it. It also gets smarter with adding periods and commas without needing to say like enter comma or enter period right there. I know a lot of times when I use dictation in the past, I would have to literally just say period and comma for it to do that. But now Mac OS, iOS and iPad OS gets better with the on-device intelligence and it will put those commas and periods in there without needing to say it. Now, as far as Safari goes, Safari does get all of the same features that we got in iOS 16. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here. If you wanna see all those features, I will link you to my iOS 16 video in the description of this video, but we do have shared tab groups. We have tab groups start pages. We can also now pin tabs in the tab groups. And of course, we also have more syncing options now, so we can sync our website settings and our extensions settings. So if you have multiple you know, devices with Safari, you will now have the same settings across all devices along with the same extensions. We also have passkey support coming. So this is going to allow you to share passwords across devices. And since it's going to essentially replace passwords, you won't need to worry at least as much about phishing or data leaks or somebody getting a hold of your password, which I can't wait to use. In the mail application, we now have improved search so we have more accurate results than we did previously so you can see right here we can search for something and it shows it right away you could also you know break it down by the subject or the attachments you'll also sometimes get suggestions before you even start typing which is nice and then just like in iOS and iPad OS 16 we do get the option to remind ourselves of a message so you can see we have remind me right here you could set that also when you go to compose a message if you tap on the little 
uh, button right here, this little arrow down. You can see it says scheduled send, and you can set a certain time to send that message. And then of course, if you do send a message, you do have the option to unsend that. So you can see right here, it says undo send, click on that and it will unsend that email. And then you can also add rich links. And if you forget to include an attachment or a recipient, the mail application will ask you if you want to add whatever it thinks it's missing, as you just saw. The photos application now gets the password protected, hidden and recently deleted folders. So if we go into the recently deleted right here, you can see you have to use a password to get into our recently deleted photo section. And of course, the same will be for the hidden album if you have that enabled. And if you go into the settings right here, you can see under memories, we now have show featured content and also privacy. We have use touch ID or password that of course is to enable a password for our recently deleted and hidden folders. You will also have the duplicates folder if you do have duplicates. I don't know why mine is not showing up. Let's see if I quit it and reopen if we have the duplicates duplicates there. So no, still not showing up for me. But if you have them, you should see that right there. And you'll be able to merge those duplicates. That way your device keeps the highest quality and deletes the one that is the lower quality. And that will save up some storage on your device. And then one of the coolest features in the photos application this year is the lift subject from background feature. So if you right click here and do copy subject, so right there, you can see it kind of highlighted the subject in this photo. It will automatically determine that like in real time. And if we go ahead to like our notes right here and go to this, let's just do a paste now. You can see it shows the subject right there. Of course, it's not perfect. That wasn't really a good image to do it on, but you could see it works pretty well. So I'll try it again with one more picture to show you guys. All right, so here's a better one. So when I select copy subject, it has a little white outline going around the subject, which is a pretty neat animation. Let's copy that. Let's go in here and let's paste and take a look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. And while we're in the notes application, I should mention that you can now lock a note and you could choose which password is used. So if you go up to your settings right here and go down to the bottom, you can see it says password method. So you could use your max login password or a custom password specifically for notes. So you now get the option. And I think using your login password is easier to remember and allows you to unlock all of them with the same password. You also have the option to use Touch ID if you would like. And then we have all of the other iOS 16 features as well and the ability to collab with a link. So like if you have a link to a note, you could send it to somebody and they can join in and basically contribute and collaborate with you in that note in real time. Now, if you're a gamer, you will be pleased to see that we have Metal 3 and Metal FX upscaling to improve loading times for games and also they will perform better now. There's also a new feature called Buddy Controller that allows you to combine two controllers into one whenever you need support during a game. There's also a redesigned Game Center dashboard. So if you use Game Center, you will see there is a new UI change. You could also now play together via SharePlay with select applications. Now, if you have an iPad Pro and you use that as a secondary display, there's now a new reference mode with Sidecar that allows you to use that iPad Pro as a secondary reference display for your Mac. And then there's also a new application coming later this year called Freeform and this is basically like a big collaborative whiteboard so basically you're allowed to invite collaborators you share a link and then you start working together instantly so others add in their thoughts you can see changes in real time and basically it's just a big whiteboard where everybody can interact together and apple said that's coming later in the year. And then like I've mentioned throughout this video, we do have all of the other really small incremental changes that we see with iOS and iPad OS 16. Those are all pretty much implemented into Mac OS as well. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are some new features and changes found in the new Mac OS Ventura. I'm sure a lot more will come in the future. And of course, I will be making more videos on this software in the future as well. So if you would like to see that, I would appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos when they do come out. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.